So welcome to the International Peace Institute uh, webinar uh, that we had started uh, a few years ago on this chapter of uh, involving youth as leaders uh, uh, for peace as uh, uh, Adam has been the key uh, actor in this regard. Uh, we call that the uh, Young Global Leaders series. And uh, we had the chance, as I said, uh, previously uh, in hosting him uh, launching his uh, two books, both. And then uh, uh, building on that, uh, we had uh, uh, witnessed lots of uh, sad developments that had shaken uh, whole societies in this part of the world and beyond. And uh, thanks to uh, Sarah Ghanoum for uh, sharing with us her uh, publications. Uh, uh, and uh, Sarah uh, uh, reacted as everyone wishes to. Uh... Hello, Tanya, how are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, Tanya made a quick appearance on uh, okay. camera. And here she is again. Uh, um, as I was welcome to this uh, webinar, uh, Tanya. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, so, uh, as I've been telling my friends, uh, we'd like to link this uh, wide range of uh, innovators, of creators, of producers, of writers, of thinkers, thinkers to uh, uh, this think tank, uh, IPI. Uh, which uh, is focusing on uh, a global mandate on uh, building uh, resilience and managing uh, risks or helping societies uh, and member states of the UN to uh, uh, make their societies with different uh, layers to be uh, capable of uh, building their own resilience and uh, uh, managing their own risks. So uh, I think this uh, uh, group uh, will be uh, exploring how with your uh, artworks, with your uh, writings, with your uh, uh, ways of thinking, we could uh, build another or lay another uh, stone on the uh, long uh, highway uh, towards uh, bringing that uh, objective to uh, the concrete work of the uh, multilateral system. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we count on you to uh, uh, help us envisage uh, more uh, long-term work on how uh, creators, artists uh, could contribute to uh, uh, these efforts of uh, not alleviating, but uh, illustrating how societies could uh, cope with uh, such uh, developments. Uh, and I think there is nothing um, better than, uh, as I said, building uh, the uh, resilience within uh, societies. Uh, without uh, further ado, I would uh, like to uh, invite uh, Dalia, uh, policy analyst at IPI MENA, to make the opening statement on behalf of IPI. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to see all of you here today with us on this important theme of building youth resilience through creative outputs. Um, as Mr. Fiji mentioned, the global community is currently experiencing um, a time of great difficulty with the coronavirus. Um, and within our own regional neighborhood, the pandemic is a stressor that comes atop conflict, economic strife, and both natural as well as man-made disasters. Youth make up a significant portion of the world's demographic in the Middle East and North Africa alone, those under the age of 24 make up half of the population. And by 2050, half of the countries in MENA are projected to have population increases of at least 50% from the already burgeoning levels of 2015. Unfortunately, it's also our young men and women and the youth who will have felt and will carry the brunt of the pandemic's effects in the many years to come. As such, it's crucially important that a system is put in place to promote the values championed by the UN and UNESCO, which can withstand and negate the susceptibility of youths from falling into violence, hate, despair, 
that is precipitated by prolonged exposure to such um, adversities and threats. Resilience can be defined as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. It's about how we adapt. And youth are agents of change and as decision makers of our collective futures. The attributes and skills which stem from their resilience, be it tenacity, compassion, tolerance, all of which are building blocks to a culture of peace, are indications of how they can lead us towards a future of sustainable development and durable peace. Their empowerment and resilience influences and underlines entire communities and results in a more holistic societal resilience. And resilience is more than an abstract target. It's a trait that is present innately within us. In that sense, we must find as many ways to activate and harness it. And I'm sure as we all agree, the arts and its creative counterparts are a perfect outlet to process the impact of trauma as a step towards embodying and building resilience. In particular, education in schools can be a focal point for building resilience through the arts. How we approach trauma from an educational standpoint is important. And schools play a direct and important role in combating the byproducts of trauma that we must eradicate, such as violent extremism. And in this respect, the arts are by nature inclusive activities, and when incorporated into curriculums, they can encourage students to express themselves freely without fears of judgment, and can be a powerful way to learn how to process difficult emotions, which result in building confidence, character, and in essence, resilience. It's our duty as a global community, even amid global crises that has stopped the education of 1.6 billion children globally, to ensure that we must continue to sow the seeds of resilience within youth and children and prevent any further obstacles to achieving a culture of peace. Through resilience, young people will not just bounce back, but will bounce forward towards a peaceful and sustainable society. I'll stop there and I look forward to hearing from our panelists and your valuable insights in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dalia. Uh, that's, I have no comment to make on that since this is uh, an in-house product. Thank you for, for that. I will uh, move quickly to uh, our guest, our main guest, there you are all main guests. Sarah Hanoum, the author of Tom Arian's series. And I hope these series will uh, never end and they will uh, reach the objective uh, that you have in mind to uh, have a, a, human, a, hum, a humane uh, and humanitarian, uh, humanist, sorry, uh -huh. humanist dimensions. Uh, you had uh, uh, been uh, prompt, swift, and to the point uh, when you reacted to the sad events in Lebanon. I was really impressed and uh, with your team who came up with that uh, fantastic, uh, outstanding, uh, uh, I would say, uh, output. Sarah, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Energy, for the stellar inter introduction. Um, I, uh, I write a children's uh, book series centered around an alien who comes to Earth and discovers everything that children discover. Uh, such as feelings and social interactions. And as Najib just put it, unfortunately, my country, Lebanon, uh, I come from Beirut where uh, the Be Beirut blast just happened on August 4th. Um, we have a lot of children who were left traumatized by uh, one of the biggest non-nuclear explosions to happen in the world, in the, in the history of humankind. And so um, being a big proponent of reading and uh, the healing tools of reading. I thought if I was able to take my alien on such an experience, uh, as such a as a cosmic explosion, I would be able to give the children and also the parents the tools, the words to help alleviate such a pain, and maybe to let the children feel like they are not alone in feeling and in, in going through such such a monstrous event. And. Um, Dalia, you put it, uh, you gave a great intro. You said everything about resilience and our children. Uh, we know that children are very resilient uh, beings. They are maybe even more resilient than adults. They adapt much faster to a new normal. But uh, we have to keep in mind that being resilient is not the same as being invulnerable. They are, uh, they are just able to adapt faster. They are able, 
we need to make them able actually to be able to, to bounce back from adversity and to, um, to, to face new challenges in, on earth, unfortunately, to go back to the alien uh, uh, simile. Earth is always gonna hit us with unexpected events, be it na natural disasters or human made or, or just sometimes dynamic within a family where children are uh, exposed to many forms of abuse. Um, there is uh, a lot of ways to build resilience. Um, uh, I think a major building block for resilience is creativity. Unfortunately, in the educational sector, sometimes they tend to overlook it. They tend to give more, um, a more, a bigger spotlight on the academics, academic side, uh, like uh, languages and mathematics, overlooking the importance of creativity, which is basically uh, one of the ways in which we unleash the negative, um, the negative. Uh, energy that trauma or adversity can leave us with. Creativity is a form of expression and self-expression is at the end of the day, a birthright. It is, it is freedom of speech is, I mean, it has the value of freedom of speech is that it takes out uh, these thoughts and emotions that are inside of us and it, it gives us a way to, to express it out and to take it out of our systems in a, maybe a, in a way, in a more constructive way. And so um, what is amazing about uh, books is that uh, books are giving us not just answers to everything in the world, but they're also giving us uh, healing tools. Uh, they are uh, giving the child, um, it teaches child empathy, teaches child to put um, themselves, to realize they are not alone and to put themselves in other people's uh, shoes and to, to, to realize that, I mean, this is one of the ways in which we build resilience. Um, it shows a child that life does go on. Um, these are all, uh, the, these are all extremely important towards, towards that aim. And so um, I can go on and on about books <laughs> and um, uh, another also, very important point I should add is that uh, another given right to children is the play, the, the right to play in a safe environment, in an environment that is not restricted with uh, extreme rules and rigidity because a child that is able to play in a comfortable space uh, comes out of this playing session feeling relaxed and feeling just uh, happy as opposed to a child who is extremely restricted, who can show, can actually manifest in more violence towards others. I mean, these are, I think, essential um, reading, playing, and creativity should, I, I feel like there should be a much bigger spotlight on them, on the importance of, of all of these um, in order to uh, not just build resilience, it's also about uh, bringing up a happier generation. So uh, that's my two cents. I agree with you. I wish you could go uh, for uh, go on and on and on and never stop because <laughs> it's, it's music in my ears. Uh, Sarah, uh, I think she touched upon one of the important elements in our uh, times. It's uh, writing, which has uh, become a, a rare commodity, but which is even what is even in, uh, further or more rare, I would say, uh, community is reading. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you are doing a great job in this uh, way as you have readapted uh, the skill of writing uh, and added to it another attractive dimension, which is art, illustration, uh, whatever you call it, uh, which is, uh, in, in my view, uh, if, uh, uh, you can you cannot imagine how important that is. And uh, I know, in, uh, I wouldn't say decent, uh, in uh, many families, all efforts when you have, they have newborns are targeted, uh, uh, targeting uh, how to 
make reading attractive to them. Uh, writing, uh, reading, uh, or telling them the uh, berceuse, which is the night of before, what we call it in English, berceuse, the stories that we tell kids before they go to sleep. Bedtime stories. Uh -huh. Bedtime oh, stories. lullabies. Lullabies or bedtime stories? Bedtime stories. Both are very important. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you a very quick story. Uh, Tanya, how, how uh, short is time with you? You have to leave in five minutes? Um, I have to leave at 6.45. Okay, then uh, let me finish this story very quickly. There's uh, these, these uh, I mean, I know the case, the skid uh, of uh, my best uh, couple of friends, his mother and father were relaying, reading uh, bed sto bedtime stories to him. So he went to school and he turned silent. So, uh, at, but on everything, but at bedtime, he would insist that his father or mother would read a story for him. He was enjoying it so much and he became silent. So one day his mother went to school to ask what's, what's going on with his, her kid. She said, there's nothing, he's genius. And especially he's excellent at reading. So he was hiding the fact that he was good at reading <laughs> to carry on enjoying his, his parents' uh, bedtime. So, but this is, this is uh, I mean, uh, uh, an elbow story, as we say. But uh, thank you very much. And please, let's think together. This is uh, of how to make this a first step towards a long journey together to uh, mobilize writers, uh, those who are capable of uh, writers with content. It's very easy to, to, to write. It's very easy to talk, but what's the substance? What could bring our children towards reading a good book? And I will end there, giving the floor, I will give the floor to Reem Salah, Associate Director of External Relations. She's the Foreign Minister of the Art Center uh, in New York University, Abu Dhabi, and of course, a filmmaker. We will uh, now uh, pester her with the, the new uh, output that would uh, be uh, also uh, in partnership with us and other partners to, uh, towards these objectives and goals. Reem, you have the floor, please. Thank you so much, Najib. And I'm happy that I'm coming after uh, the introduction of uh, Dahlia and uh, Sarah's because it's quite complementary to what I'm about to say. I mean, Sarah spoke about creativity and that's such an important thing and that we completely disregard, unfortunately, and disregard the impact uh, arts and creativity go hand in hand. And this is what I would like to focus on, uh, given my experience as, a, as an artist and also working a lot in uh, film um, and film festivals programming content for children. I mean, um, several programs targeted at enhancing youth's resilience and mental well being use art based interventions to promote the development of a sense of belonging and purpose solution inclusion, relationship building, and the improvement of social skills and self-esteem. The, the relationship between arts engagement and psychological well-being and mental health is well established. This is not a new discovery, but it is often disregarded, unfortunately. When working with children in conflict areas, for instance, refugees or other, the focus is always, and rightfully so, on basic needs and protection. What we disregard is what I like to call food for the soul, is a healthy, sustainable, long-term plan to engage children in arts. It's, it's a healing process as well, and they need to feel connected. There are always efforts into creating arts activities in these places, but not sustainable. They're not long-term, and uh, oftentimes they're presented as a one-off activity. In addition, arts present a wide range of related factors, including fewer socioeconomical difficulties, higher level of academic self-confidence, improved mood, better communication for children, even with autistic spectrum disorders. The point that concerns me the most now that we're talking, uh, which I find lacking in film and media in general, is in relation to self-identity. Arts activity, creating arts in particular, 
has been suggested to validate the uniqueness of an individual, which gives rise to sense of accomplishment and to feelings of self-worth in their own abilities and helps enhance self-empowerment, self-esteem and self-worth. Especially when you have models of identification, when you watch something that talks to you, to your struggles, to your traumas, to your language, the effect is completely different. And obviously it helps improve pride. I mean, we can talk about the impact of arts on children um, for hours and hours, but these are a few examples of the impact of art. Um, more specifically, the media impact on youth identity, media and film. Uh, media provides some of the most significant components for building youth identity. The construction of Arab identity is complicated because of the indigenous cultural production, including books, now that we're talking about books, uh, cinema and television. Now, television, of course, remains the dominant medium and even when in the Arabic language, it is mostly influenced by Western ideas and values. It's encouraged to be exposed to other cultures, of course, and definitely very important, but not for it to be the only source from which young, especially middle-class English-speaking Arabs draw on, their, draw on that to define their identity. This identity tends to be influenced by Western, mostly US popular culture, and its focus on individual identity and consumerism. Children, on the other hand, from lower income families have almost nothing to identify with. Uh, and I say this with confidence, there are definitely some efforts, but it's not enough. And Dalia, you mentioned something that I also had as a note here. We have in the Middle East, the highest percentage of youth, but with the lowest percentage of original content directed to them. And this is really sad fact. It is also a reflection of the crisis of Arab cultural production at large. And here comes the importance of what Sarah did in, in a time of crisis. Uh, Sarah, what you did is, is, is huge because you've written a book in Arabic for children in Lebanon, in their language. And there is also another version in, in English, which also, but it has the language of the culture that talks immediately to a trauma that um, th that helps them and helps the parents talk about it for healing. And as, um, uh, as an Arab woman growing in Lebanon during the war, these are things that we suppress. We don't talk about it and we suffer from PTSD. So what you did is the first step towards healing and we need more of that. As a film programmer uh, working to find content for children and youth, we had huge challenges because to start with, there are, there's a lack of original children content in Arabic. It's really almost impossible to find that. We find, for instance, films that have children as protagonists, but not made for children. These, these films cannot be seen or they're not age appropriate sometimes because they do not tackle, they are not made for children and there's a completely different criteria. There's a lack of infrastructure to support artists into creating work directed for children and youth. And again, because to start with, we have a huge problem with funding, but in general, there's nothing directed to youth specifically. And there's a lack of platforms to hear the, the voice of youth itself. When, when you don't have content that is directed for youth in their own language, talking about their own culture, they're there are no platforms for them to express that, to, to, to relate to it, to, to have a platform to share their own input on it. Um, well, I hope, I mean, that such talks allow us to raise these issues, to invest in the most pre precious asset of our future, which is youth. And um, these things in, in investing in original content and giving them the platform is needed now more than ever. At the end of the day, the last few years have been very um, traumatic for our youth. Uh, displacement, war is the explosion in Lebanon. So the efforts into trying to reach them and be accessible and also hearing their voice is not and, and uh, something extra, it is, it is a necessity. And again, I, I use this, it's food for the soul. 
And thank you for bringing this platform together because, and, and listening to the voice of the youth so that we can hopefully make it um, uh, something more sustainable. Thank you so much. Uh, Anjad Dream, uh, you uh, just walked us into this uh, fantastic, uh, 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 as if I'm in uh, the... Uh, I don't think uh, we can hear you, right? Or am I the only one? I can, I can, I can hear myself. <laughs> can you hear me now, everybody? Okay, so... Uh, it's great, I mean, uh, to see a filmmaker and then uh, uh, an expert in external relations uh, to comment on a, a writer, uh, Sarah, and uh, you uh, make me uh, dream of something uh, done between you, Sarah, and uh, Tanya, who, uh, who, to whom we'll be listening uh, immediately uh, after this. Uh, and I started thinking of seeing you in uh, film festivals, either for youth or Carthage in my country, where you would uh, come up with a movie, three of you and uh, all of you, I would say, with uh, Adam and uh, uh, Yara uh, as uh, key uh, actors or contributors to that. So um, never mind my uh, daydreamer uh, uh, dimension, uh, but... Uh, I believe in the Chinese saying, when you have a dream, you have to wake up early. And believe me, I wake up early. So, uh, Tanya, without delay, I'd like to listen uh, to you with all uh, our colleagues and with uh, great interest. So this is another filmmaker. I don't think it, in my uh, previous panels, I had two filmmakers with this uh, fresh uh, age range. Tanya, please. Hey everyone, my name is Tani Amu. I'm 18 years old. I'm an artist and a filmmaker. So to jump off of what you guys said is sort of on this line, but um, Stephen King once said the most important words are the hardest to say. And I believe that the arts and film can convey a thousand words and stories. I use those mediums to call for change by portraying different societal issues and taboo topics. My journey of prompting change through film began in 2016 when I launched an app called Arab Emoji. Its objective was to change the narrative of how Arabs are perceived in mainstream media. After a year, I started an art account called At The Gluten Club, where I illustrated pieces that conveyed different social issues such as the gender pay gap, inequality, microaggressions against women, and honor killing. Through the art account, I learned that, I learned the importance of being vocal about my perspective and I also learned that once you share your perspective um, the art is no longer about you as everyone begins to see a different art piece so it sort of comes tailored to the viewer and it's open to be perceived by hundreds of eyes and minds and everyone sees a different piece and intentions and that's important because it allows people to be seen and to be heard which is vital for us to feel like like it's vital for us to feel like we matter and that we're seen and I believe that speaking your truth and sharing things you've seen in your life is a form of youth resilience. And there's nothing more powerful than that. I've always been a film lover, but I only realized it was something that was attainable and something I could do in 2016 after reading the screenplay of Birdman. Going to the cinema was something I did on a weekly basis. And through that, I lived through thousands of characters, thousands of stories, and I've opened myself up to different perspectives. But one thing that made me realize is that I never truly saw myself reflected on screen. Um, and that's why it prompted me to want to create stories that, not, that reflected our region um, and not in the extreme way that are seen in Hollywood films. It doesn't have to be on an extreme spectrum. It could just be an average person. And what I want to do is I want to explore who we are and what we are instead of what we are through the arts. I think now more than ever, gold dreams that seem too far and out of reach, such as making a movie or becoming an original, all seem within our reach due to social media and the accessibility of technology. Why a like, long time ago you'd have to get equipment to make a film and all sorts of like cameras, microphones and all that. You can now just do it on your iPhone. And that's how I create my art piece. All my art pieces are created through my phone. 
And I think it's important that we use the resources we have to our advantage to amplify our voices and share our, our experiences. I believe storytelling can change the world as change happens when a group of thoughtful people come together for a cause. Film and art are communication at its highest forms. And I intend to communicate like a message of acceptance, unity, and empathy through my projects. And hopefully it allows the audience to open their hearts and be vulnerable and engage with the issues I present through the arts. Um, I'm gonna end this with a quote. Uh, by Miyazaki that said, you have to be determined to change the world. That's what it means to be a filmmaker. Thank you. That's excellent. That's excellent. Thank you so much for uh, such a young uh, filmmaker with all these ideas and this, uh, I would say, journey and this uh, background. I'm, I'm so impressed. Uh, I hope you can uh, stay with us for uh, another few minutes so we could listen to uh, Adam uh, and uh, Yara, uh, then we'll be uh, uh, over with uh, this uh, session that I wish it could take longer, although you made it very, very to the point, very brief. Uh, shall we start with uh, Yara or Adam? You guys decide since you are together. Uh, sure. um, I'll go first. Very good. Okay, Adam. Okay. So, um, my name is Adam, and you may know me as the author of the book, Hakim the Adventure, which I wrote when I was nine years old. Um, and so, through that book, I've met um, Mr. Friji with IPI, and I've gone through many seminars about peace and my book, especially. And today I'll be talking why the importance of encouraging children and youth um, to express their creativity, uh, to process trauma is really important, and especially to spread a message of peace um, throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Um, I believe that it's really important to um, process trauma through creativity, such as um, music or art or anything like making things or drawing um, and poetry as well, because it's a great way to show like the world what you've been through. There's many events throughout the past two decades, like the Syrian civil war, the Beirut explosion in August this year, the war in Iraq, the Yemeni civil war, and other conflicts in the Middle East that affected many children and teenagers. And many of them have gone through refugee camps or have immigrated to other continents like Europe or Asia. And there have been many examples where these children and refugees have used music and art to process their trauma. For example, refu many refugee camps in Lebanon, many children have decided to take up music to play traditional music um, from their culture to process their trauma. And it was a great way to share their memories from different areas from Syria, from people from the, and it was a, it was an amazing thing to see as I watched a video not too long ago about the uh, refugees playing the instruments. And there'd be many, it's not just music, it's also art. There'd be many instances where many children, teenagers, boys and girls have used art, such as painting, drawing, poetry, to express um, what they've gone through and their trauma. And I think it's a very important thing what we're trying to say here. Like, I think it's a great thing what we're doing. Thank you, my friend, Adam. Very good to listen to you. And then uh, as usual, Adam uh, is very, very discreet. Once Adam takes the floor, he impresses. Yes. And I can see from your facial reactions were uh, very responsive and uh, in a good uh, reactive uh, mood to uh, what Adam is saying. Now I'd like to listen to Yara. She's a young poetess. As Adam said, all creators, writers, and he didn't uh, commit poetry. Uh, we, uh, I'm, I was witness of one of the greatest great poems that uh, Yara came up with. Uh, how many years ago, Yara? Um, I think it was like 
um, maybe like two, I think two years ago. Yes, and uh, I look forward to the, uh, the new vintages. Yalla, go ahead, you have the floor, my friend. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna like, um, like I'm just gonna briefly like continue what Adam said because like, I think a lot of the points he covered was like um, similar to mine. So, um, so yeah, I think creativity is um, like really helps children like express and like cope with their traumas and like their feelings by reducing um, psychological stress that they have. And like, especially children from um, like Yemen, Iraq and Syria and Lebanon from like, um, you know, like from their recent um, traumas, a lot of children um, like experience. So there was a lot of children like now they're, they're looking to um, like singing and dancing and painting um, as a way to like express this, um, like to express their trauma. So, because I think creativity provides a powerful escape from like a trauma that's like inescapable. Um, so like, for example, singing. So in singing, it releases like blockages of energy, which is relevant, especially for the children um, who experience trauma, who have um, frozen up and like numbed areas in their body that um, holds traumatic experiences. And I feel like also, like when these children, like um, they explain, like they, um, like they show the world, like how they're coping with their traumas. It also like inspires other kids who, um, who've also like experienced traumas, like um, to look at creativity as a way to deal with this. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much, Yara. And uh, I think in addition to what uh, Adam said, you are uh, also providing us with uh, lots of ideas and uh, uh, I would say uh, future concepts that could be useful, to, especially to our creators here, uh, Sara and uh, Reem and Tanya, who unfortunately had to leave. Uh, I wish uh, we could uh, find a way uh, to uh, keep in touch, uh, or to establish links between Adam, uh, Yara, uh, Tanya, Reem, and Sara to see where we could, uh, or with us, the uh, even uh, younger kids, uh, to uh, see where, where we could go from here. And uh, of course, uh, I would. Uh, say uh, the sky is the limit, but uh, first and uh, uh, foremost priority for uh, Yara and uh, uh, Adam is to uh, make it uh, the best way in school. So uh, uh, being a good writer and making, uh, making it uh, the right way at school would be a, a double, doubly, uh, I would say, uh, convincing message. Uh, before uh, giving the floor to uh, uh, Elisa Shea, our research uh, uh, intern in uh, IPI MENA, I'd like to see if we could uh, devote a few minutes to uh, kind of exchange questions, uh, remarks. Uh, I don't want it to be uh, just uh, making speeches and leaving. Yes, Rim. Just, just very quickly, I'm so, so happy to, um, to have Tanya, Adam, uh, and Yara, and listening to them warms the heart, their talent, and to uh, hear it from them, what they need as well. And this is really crucial. They need to have more presence, and they, their voice needs to be heard, and their arts needs to be seen. And, um, and have a platform. So I'm really happy uh, and very proud, honestly, to, to, to listen to you and to what you, what you have to say. Great. So, uh, Ganum, <laughs> any comment, any follow-up, any questions? Uh, 
Okay, sorry, Te technology is just not for me. <laughs> Can you guys hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, likewise, Reem, I am so impressed. It's, it's really amazing just listening to younger voices uh, so maturely and just they, they so eloquently. I mean, uh, I am beyond impressed, honestly. And like, like Reem said, I'm very proud to be on this platform. It's such a, it's, it's a great blend, I think, of resources of the region. So thank you so much for, to, for putting this together. Dahlia, uh, and uh, I don't think Elisa will have, uh, will be asked to comment because she's now ready for, to make the uh, closing uh, remarks. This, this will, uh, of course, uh, put, an additional uh, sense of mission and responsibility to uh, work with uh, this fantastic uh, team uh, towards uh, uh, contributing to the objective of uh, having uh, all these, uh, I would say, uh, I don't call them commodities, but uh, uh, sources of wealth the uh, les providence uh, we can use the uh, al baraket this is not oh. anybody this is a, a fantastic opportunity and uh, please make sure if i insist i know that you are extremely smart and we don't need to tell you things twice so let's look into how we uh, where we go and how we go out of this uh, uh, from here, I would say, from uh, uh, this uh, fantastic gathering. Uh, Elisa, uh, our uh, dear uh, research uh, intern, uh, and she is now in Brunei Dar es Salaam, and she's from Singapore. And she is uh, an amazing uh, young uh, colleague. Elisa, you have the floor. Um, yeah, so I just yeah, I want to say thank you for everyone for sharing their insights. It's um, reinforced more than ever than what we already know, how these three interconnected areas of youth, art, and building resilience, um, sort of the trifecta combination, you could say, is um, an effective strategy to building long-term uh, peace and uh, tackling such trauma that we've talked about. Um, what's the... Dis the, what the discussion has highlighted is rather the common thread that seems to be is how art appeals to our common humanity in building uh, in being able to express ourselves and find our identity and and how it helps us to start difficult conversations on difficult uh, topics with uh, the younger generation. Um, whether it be conversations with oneself regarding your own feelings or sharing ideas and new perspectives, and even as a way of learning about the world. Um, to borrow what Reem said, food for the soul, it is sort of what sustainable long-term planning needs to, how art needs to be this sort of sustainable long-term plan um, that can be the starting point for such um, a healing process for this generation. So um, yeah, uh, thank you <laughs> again. I'm confident that um, this was the first of many great conversations we're gonna have on the topic here at IPI. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, what you have uh, uh, heard from uh, Elisa will be part of uh, the substance of a press release that we'll be placing hopefully uh, soon in our website. Please consult our uh, uh, website. It's ipinst, ipinst.org. And have a look at our website. Uh, so you'll understand the mandate of uh, IPI and uh, you'll see your uh, uh, press release and uh, Okay, thank you very much, Dalia, for showing the uh, our uh, website coordinates. It's very, very easy. And uh, looking forward to the next next steps as uh, 
it is uh, uh, stressed. Again, Sara, Rim, Tanya, and Abstentia, Adam, Yara, thank you so much on my behalf and that of uh, Dalia and uh, Elisa. And uh, don't be strangers, uh, just uh, suggest a webinar and we'll be discussing. And you can count on us and count on me. We would act, the sky is the limit. Uh, unfortunately, we have started a bit late because very soon you'll have the Tunis uh, Film Festival. And, uh, but it's a yearly, uh, I would say, gathering. So uh, I'm not putting any pressure on you. Just let me know uh, any contribution. And I have many, many people in Tunisia where, uh, who are into this uh, noble uh, art uh, you are in. Uh, I'm talking about the filmmaking because I'm seeing uh, Adam, uh, Yara through her poetry, uh, Sarah through her uh, uh, writings, I would say the specific writings and the quick reaction to have to get together uh, and come up with the kind of uh, artwork, I wouldn't say movie, an artwork that uh, would aim at uh, uh, what we have just uh, mentioned in terms of uh, challenges in facing the children. And as, and the, as, as, as I keep saying, once you address uh, children in, uh, from this angle or that, regarding uh, an event or a development, uh, sad or traumatizing, and you uh, take the healing approach or the uh, resilience building approach, you do not target that, or aim, I don't like the word target, you don't aim at that uh, particular child. Uh, I think once you have an impact on her or him, it's the whole family that is affected. I would say even goes beyond the family, goes to the school, goes to the street, goes to everybody with whom that uh, uh, young uh, man or woman uh, uh, are uh, mixing with, are interacting with. And, uh, I think I'm not inventing the wheel there uh, by saying this to you, you are the experts. I'm uh, here as a, I grant myself the status of a child learning from you. On this, if you have no further questions, I would uh, wish you a gulfy happy weekend. The uh, work continues tomorrow in the rest of the world, in the West. And please, 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 this is your house, your forum, your institute. Think tank in it and do tank in it. On this, if you have no further remarks, I bid you see you soon.